What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. We finally have the official rules for the 2022 season. Now, this is gonna be either amazing news or bad news or just kind of mid news for you guys, but we are finally going back to a season long format as in the rules will not be updating, you know, periodically through the season, but the entire season, it's going to be one rule set and we have finally reached the GS Cup format, which means we now have access to two Restricteds and while ideally, in my opinion, no Dynamax would have been great because it kind of keeps Zation from being way too valuable, uh, Dynamax is legal, but honestly, it's it seems to be interesting. Like Dyna we, we practiced Dynamax legal GS Cup uh, quite a while ago and it was pretty fun, so I'm, I'm pretty optimistic for this upcoming series. If you guys are optimistic for the series or just enjoy the video, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content and answer my comment question of the day, which is what cores are you thinking about using in the upcoming format? But yeah, uh, let's get into it. I actually initially had a video recorded talking about what I wanted in series 12, but lo and behold, uh, it came out the day it was supposed to, <laughs> like the series 12 rules came out the day the video was supposed to drop, so I just had to cancel it. Uh, and here we are. It's actually VGC 2022, which is exciting to see. This is what we will be playing in tournament. So I'm super excited for that. I'm so excited to be playing in tournaments again, like in person. I'm excited to meet all of you guys at some point. Uh, but let's talk about what I think is going to be the pros and cons of this format, as well as what I think are uh, going to be some of the best duos. Well, I I'm going to get this out of the way. The best Pokemon in the format is once again Zacian Crowned. But where Zacian was like you know, at 44% usage in the previous format, he's probably going to be upwards of like 60 in this format. And here's why. When you have access to a G-Max Pokemon, let's go with, uh, let's go with Venusaur, for example. G-Max Venusaur, one of those valuable G-Max Pokemon. And you have access to the Restricted that wants to go next to that G-Max Pokemon. You have, you know, you could get the value of a second Restricted. You could go with like a, like a Xerneas here, right? But while you would get the value of a second Restricted, you wouldn't get the value of effectively a second Dynamax, and that's what Zacian is. It's almost like a second Dynamax, given it's able to hit just as hard uh, against regular Dynamax Pokemon uh, with Behemoth Blade as it would, you know, non-Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, and it's a Restricted, so the fact that it's both sort of makes it so you have, like, two Restricteds and two Dynamaxes, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and I think just because of that, it lends itself so much to being one of the most flexible Pokemon in the format, and that might make it a little bit, a little bit over-centralizing, but I'm willing to kind of how do i say it? i'm willing to kind of give this format a shot in not making zacian be on every team um but there are some other cores that i think will be viable and i think we'll go through those really quick uh and talk about them before we get to the zacian core which is gonna be the the main majority of like teams that i'm gonna talk about today so first of all kyogre is gonna be one of the best pokemon in the format historically it's amazing in gs cup because it's hard to stop the damage output short of a drizzle uh, or short of a snarl uh, and that damage output's high because of drizzle it's decent speed it's amazingly high special attacks at a 150 and it's access to moves like origin pulse and um water spout which are insanely powerful moves uh, however the catch is origin pulse is inaccurate and water spout gets weaker as you hit it so yeah, it's also very weak against wide guard, but you can kind of patch that by just Dynamaxing and KOing things with Max uh, Geyser. Uh, since Max Geyser off a Water Spout is still 150 and amazingly strong, I would say that this would pair pretty well with Ho-Oh, which honestly, Ho-Oh is kind of interesting. We've never expected to be that great of a Pokemon. I, I, mean, I guess we always get our hopes up that's going to be like an amazing Pokemon, but I will say historically Kyogre Ho-Oh is a very solid combo simply due to the fact Ho-Oh is able to, well, I guess it's not able to Tailwind in this format, uh, but it's able to Sacred Fire um, grass types that normally Kyogre wouldn't want to deal with, like uh, opposing Rillaboom or especially Ferrothorn, which is really good and restricted. And I believe it, it, does get, uh, it doesn't get access to Hurricane here, um, but it gets access to Brave Bird, which is going to hit the Rillaboom a lot harder than it would if it was Hurricane, since... Um, you know, Hurricane is coming off of that base 110 special attack set, and uh, Rillaboom are more inclined to run Assault Vests. It feels so weird talking about Sword and Shield, considering I've been talking about BDSP for months. Uh, but yeah, I would say that, like, the typical Hollow set would be, like, Sacred Fire, Brave Bird. Uh, you're probably going to want Protect, and you could opt to want, uh, opt to one, <laughs> opt to run Recover on this guy, or Roost, or not Roost, Recover, I guess. Um, but one of those like third coverage moves might be pretty good as well as helping hand could be kind of interesting next to Kyogre, uh, since you can just boost the power of those water spouts. 
Uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a shame it lost access to Tailwind. Because uh, that would have been really busted, and that was historically really good next to Kyogre. But the fact that this thing covers uh, Zacian, as well as um, other problematic uh, Kyogre answers, like, um, what's it called? <laughs> like the grass types in the format, like Ferrothorn and Rillaboom and Kartana, is really nice. And versus Groudon, it has a pretty decent matchup, since the sun just makes that Sacred Fire do so much damage. And likely you're going to be running a lot of speed in this guy, so you will outspeed that Groudon most of the time and be able to burn it. So yeah, I think Kyogre Ho is going to be a solid combo. Uh, another combo I could see being really good is, um, well, for one, Calyrex Ice Kyogre is probably going to be good, but I think Calyrex Ice plus Groudon could be really solid since we've seen Calyrex Ice on Sun teams are really good. Uh, so you could be like Calyrex Ice, Groudon, Venusaur. You could run Torkoal still for the double weather. Uh, and you definitely want like a Trick Room Pokemon. So either Mimikyu or Porygon 2. I would say Mimikyu and Porygon 2 is actually probably fine in this case. Uh, but yeah. Something to note is on the previous team I mentioned, the Ho-Oh plus uh, Kyogre team, you're definitely going to want to run Landorus because Landorus is able to switch in on those um, powerful physical attacking grass types as well as able to deal with Regieleki. So that's something you're going to want to note uh, for those uh, combos. So yeah, let me uh, get rid of this. Uh, there are a couple other combos I'm kind of considering at the moment. Zernala, aka Xerneas Lunala, might be kind of good, but I feel like Calyrex Shadow Rider... Um, Plus, uh, Xerneas is just outright better. Uh, just the damage output's insane. That's that's pretty much it. Like, it's, it's just insane. Um, but it obviously doesn't like Incinera because of Snarl. I think that double, not double Primal, but double Weather could also be very good. Uh, something I've been looking into the past couple of uh, days is Groudon plus Kyogre uh, with Weather Ball Abusers. Obviously, you're going to want uh, GMAX Venusaur on this team. Uh, with Weather Ball to be able to take advantage of both weathers, but you could also um, pretty reliably run a Thunderous on this team uh, as just a way to just be a generally good electro type and, you know, steer clear of Intimidate Pokemon like Groudon or Incineroar. Uh, but also, if you really want to mess with them, you could run a special attacking variant with Weather Ball as well, uh, which could really catch your opponents off guard if you're playing best of ones. Uh, Tornadus also gets access to Weather Ball and is really good next to Kyogre, uh, so that could be interesting. I, I definitely think that, like, Double Primal or double, uh, double weather restricted this is going to be kind of solid. Uh, next on this list, I honestly think that Necrozma plus Kyogre could be very, very good. And that's genuinely just because Necrozma loves being able to check Incineroar so easily. And Kyogre is one of the best Incineroar checks we have ever because it just one shots it like 99% of the time. Unless you're running like that water berry. I forget the name of. Is it Wakan? No, that's, that's electric, I think. But yeah, uh, Necrozma with like... Mimikyu and its own Incineroar. I can definitely see that. Um, what else do I have in this? I, I, in previous formats, ran Tapu Bulu next to Necrozma because it had that niche of being able to go for Nature's Madness into Sunsteel Strike. But I would argue that that niche is gone because Nature's Madness isn't quite as good now that Dynamax is back. It's pretty inconsistent. So you're probably going to be better off running uh, your own Rillaboom there, if anything. But you might not want to strictly because Kyogre doesn't like Rillaboom uh, setting up the grassy terrain for it. And that's kind of... <laughs> That's kind of bad. Um, but yeah, I think that could be really decent. I was also looking into uh, possibly Eternatus teams. As far as Eternatus goes, I think its best partner is probably going to be something that can check the various uh, ground types that can deal with it. So I think possibly Eternatus Kyogre would be a decent combo, but it's it's probably best partner is going to be like, I don't know, Zacian still. So yeah. Uh, speaking of Zacian, we should probably get into those combos. The first one that I want to make note of that I am very excited to try out is Zacian plus Zygarde. Now, if you're not aware, Zygarde goes crazy in Dynamax format because it has access to the ability Power Construct, which will turn it into Zygarde Complete, a Pokemon with an absurdly high uh, HP stat. If I could actually click on it. Yeah, 216 HP with 121 defense and 95 special defense. It's already hard to KO before Dynamax, but... Let's say you give this thing a Misty Seed and put it next to a Tapu Fini. Guess what? You're already not using Dragon Moves. So what you can do is deck this thing out with uh, Thousand Arrows, Coil. Um, what was it called? It doesn't get Extreme Speed anymore, which is kind of sucky. Uh, but Iron Tail is unironically pretty good for Dynamaxing. And you can just run Protect there. Uh, and that gives you a lot of longevity if you decide to run this thing with uh, Heal Pulse, Icy Wind, um, not Ice Punch, Icy Wind, Muddy Water, and Moonblast, and then just build it like super defensive. 
Uh, that makes Zygarde extremely hard to KO, and one of Zygarde's best checks uh, is of course the Fairy-type Pokemon as well as the Ice-type Pokemon in the format like Calyrex uh, Ice and Xerneas, which Zacian has an amazing matchup versus both those things, so you know, you'd probably want to run this thing with an Incineroar and honestly probably a Thunderous. Like, I think Thunderous is pretty good next to these guys since it uh, steers away from Intimidate. But something to note is saying you could also take advantage of instead of the Zacian is Zamazenta, which could unironically be very, be very good next to Zygarde since it gets access to coaching, not only boosting this thing's attack stat, uh, but also boosting its defense stat, pretty much giving it another coil on top of the coil that it already goes for and making it extremely hard to KO with that 216 uh, HP stat, especially when Dynamax. So, yeah. And also, since Zamazenta can't Dynamax, um, Zygarde's pretty much always going to be your Dynamax target, and that could be really nasty. And I think that's going to be one of the first things that I explore in this format. As far as other cores, I would say that uh, Zacian, Crowned, plus Kyogre, if I could actually click today, Zacian, Crowned, plus Kyogre, uh, I call it Wet Dog. Some people call it Swordfish. I think this is a very good combo. Just hyper offense. You could run like a Regieleki on this guy. Uh, you could run an Incineroar. And you could run like a Thunderous or a, a Tornadus, actually. And there you go. You have a disgustingly strong hyper offense team, which could be really nasty. And of course, you know, you don't want to forget about your Rillaboom. And that's probably going to be standard for a while. All things considered, I think that's probably going to be what we're going to see. Uh, obviously, uh, Zacian gets that uh, bonus of taking half from fire damage when the rain is up so they're naturally a very good combination uh other zacian combos to keep in mind obviously zacian plus calyrex shadow rider is going to be oppressive as hell uh it's just disgusting hyper offense your best pokemon's gonna be incinerar in that situation <laughs> as long as you don't get close combated um but something that we will definitely see is eveltal zacian uh, i like to call this one doggy darko uh, which, uh, yeah, basically Zacian deals with every fairy type in the format with Behemoth Blade. Letting Eveltal just go crazy. You could probably run like uh, an Assault Vest set, or if you really wanted to, you do the Weakness Policy set. Give it a lot of bulk. Uh, run your, um, what's that move called? Oblivion Wing. Run Dark Pulse. You could even run Snarl if you just want to like tech that on. Um, and yeah, you're just able to deal quite a bit of damage with this thing uh, once you Dynamax. It's kind of insane coming off of uh, Dark Aura plus that 131 special attack stat. Um, other Zacian partners. Obviously, Calyrex uh, Ice is going to be good. Pretty much everything is going to be good next to Zacian. And here's why Zacian is going to be kind of disgusting. It, it's, it's hard just not to justify running Zacian next to literally everything in this format. And that's going to be the issue. Like, I've already shown you, like, Zacian Groudon, Zacian Kyogre how well it synergizes with literally everything due to the fact that it's basically a second Dynamax. The name of the game is going to be countering Zacian in this format. And while you don't have to like explicitly counter team every Zacian combo, you definitely need Zacian answers. And the fact that Dynamax exists means that uh, Thunderous is going to exist next to Zacian and that's going to make it more difficult to KO. So, you know, you're definitely going to want to, you're definitely going to want to run like your Will-O-Wisps. Uh, your prankster screens, basically anything to uh, make sure you don't trigger the uh, Thunderous's um, Defiant and still be able to deal with this uh, Zacian, which is it's kind of annoying. It's, it's kind of annoying. Obviously, Colossal is going to be busted. I think um, Colossal, Zacian, Eveltal is actually going to be like a really, really good combo. Uh, you could definitely see that thing with like Dragapult and Rillaboom and obviously your Urshifu Water. And uh, here we are, Modern Colossal. It basically just got better because typically you would run like a Galarian Moltres in this slot and now it's an Eveltal, so yeah. Anyways, uh, that's all I really have to talk about as far as like the first you know, thoughts I had on this format. I'm gonna be recording quite a few testing videos in the next couple of days, so be sure you turn on all notifications, make sure it says on, I really wanna do well uh, this upcoming semester in terms of school and YouTube. I'm trying to bounce both of them. Uh, so if you want to support me, you know, leaving a like, leaving a comment especially is amazing. Joining my Discord to get all notifications for my live streams and videos is going to be amazing uh, for helping me out. And yeah, I also have a Patreon because I'm trying to move out of the house uh, this summer when I, you know, go to get a job since I'm graduating. Uh, so if you want to support me financially, you get some bonus content over there. And there's definitely going to be a ton of bonus content since this format's pretty new. So yeah, uh, I guess if you enjoyed, do all that stuff and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.